we should do? We should go surfing. I'm kind of into other things now, you know? Reading misanthropes and seriously depressed writers. Oh, come on, there. They're kind of great, though, right? We read David Chef's Beautiful Boy and Nick Chef's Tweak, and we loved both texts deeply. There was something about these dual perspectives of father and son, which was highly unusual, and it was a window onto the disease of addiction that we hadn't seen. I understand why I do things. It doesn't make me any different, all right? I'm attracted to craziness. I had never intended to write about what we were going through, but when it became clear that there was a need, I decided to go forward and do this article for the New York Times Magazine. I thought anything that would help people not to feel ashamed of it was so important, so I was really encouraging of him writing it. There was this onslaught of attention, and that was the first time I really realized that we were not alone. Hey, everybody. And then my article became the book, Beautiful Boy. An editor asked if I would be interested in maybe writing a book, and I was really excited about it. I'd written maybe a quarter or a half of the book, and then I had this horrible relapse, but ultimately I finished my book. We exchanged the books. It was like a life-changing experience because I just saw how much my actions affected him and my family in a way that was really eye-opening to me. When I read Tweak, I realized that as bad as I imagined it, it was worse. I cried on every page. But I also was really proud of him because he's so honest and he's really brave. No matter how much meth I can find to shoot up into my body, it's never enough. David Chef and Nick Chef's story is so powerful because it is very relatable and hasn't really been told yet. And it needs to be told. This is a true story about a father and a son going through this horrific adventure together. We were just going forward and thinking that this could never happen to us. And in that way, I think we're like so many families that just get blindsided when the child becomes addicted. Can you help him? We can check him in for a 28-day treatment, and then we evaluate. I thought I'd pick him up 30 days later, and he'd be fine. Relapse is a part of recovery. Relapse is part of recovery. But three or four days later, he relapsed. And that began 10 years of hell. My son is out there somewhere, and I don't know what he's doing. I don't know how to help him. The addiction is in the bones of the movie, but the story that was going to hold us and make us care was this loving relationship between a father and a son, which was very fractured. Dad, I'm really sorry about everything. Drug stories are sinister, but what is beautiful about this one is that there's a lot of goodwill, and the dream for this movie was always that it's a movie about not just addiction, but a movie about acceptance. It's always hard turning a great book into a great script. I thought it was a really good translation of the books. Both books created this singular entity that I just imagined as a film could be extremely gripping. The question was how to make the emotional journey unified. And the answer was to weight it in favor of David, the father, that essentially it's his point of view of Nick's trauma carrying us through the narrative. You're allowed to be mad at me, Nick. I made mistakes, I wish that I hadn't, but I did. I really was afraid to see the movie, but it wasn't just beautiful, it really captured the feeling of how we lived. Seeing the movie itself was just such a reminder of where we were and of how far we've come. There's not a second that I don't look over at Nick and feel grateful. You know, we've just been through so much. Do you know how much I love you? I love you more than everything. I love you everything. Everything. Everything.